This tank chat, or really it's a mini tank chat, is going to be about this vehicle, uh, the SDK of Z302 or 303, uh, known to most people interested in the subject as the Goliath. Now, the Goliath is one of these interesting things. Obviously, it's not really a tank. What we're talking about here is a mobile bomb uh, that was controlled, it was wire guided, and it was used really as a demolition charge. So it's not really a tank at all, but it's something in the collection we've got here at the Tank Museum, so we thought we'd tell you a little bit more about it. Um, the story behind it, in 1940, when Germany invades France, there's a French military designer, Adolf Cagress. He's a person who's come up with the half-track system. He's a military engineer, and he's been working on a tracked mobile bomb. Uh, he doesn't want it to fall into the German hand, so he throws it in the Seine River. Um, the Germans fish it out, and they like the idea of it. They look at it, and they think they may have a use for it. So they go to Borgward, the German motor car manufacturer in Bremen. They develop the idea, and they come up with a first version, the uh, 302 version, of what we now know of as Goliath and the, it's got inside it, in a middle compartment, there's three main compartments on the vehicle we can have a look at, uh, the middle compartment, the first version has got two electric motors in it, um, but they are very expensive to build. They're about 3,000 Reichmarks each, so from the point of view of cost, this is a fairly costly vehicle to put together. Um, the idea being that the electric motors in the middle, there would be a cable reel on the box in the back, um, that would have about 650 metres of cable. Now that cable's got three strands on it. The idea is you have a control box to control the vehicle um, and on that control bo box, three different controls. One going down one wire is for acceleration, so speeding up the vehicle or slowing it down. One of the cables is to help steer the vehicle so you can go left and right and the third cable is actually for the detonation charge. And on the control box is actually a key you have to put in uh, before you can detonate that vehicle. Um, the idea being, their thoughts are you could use something like this to go, first of all, go ahead, perhaps go into minefields, large explosion. It could take up to about from 60 to 100 uh, kilograms of high explosive. So a big bang will go off when this is detonated. So do you clear a way ahead of infantry, of tanks, and it was used for that manner at the Battle of Kursk, try and clear some minefields, or could it be used as a demolition charge up against buildings, against tanks, uh, against a bridge? That was the thought behind it, was um, you can, don't have to risk a man and you can go forward that way. Now the electric motor, because it was quite quiet, there seems to be a bit of a logic to the system. But because of the cost of that electric motor, after about two and a half thousand of these had been built, they then go to Zundap, who further developed the Goliath, and they put a motorcycle, a 703cc motorcycle engine, in the middle in place of those very expensive electric motors. Now the problem there is, that then makes it a much more noisy proposition. So you're likely to hear this coming towards you um, if it's being used. Now, all told, about 7,500 Goliaths were actually made. Um, the front compartment, by the way, is one where it actually has the explosives in it. So, and again, that charge, different models of the vehicle and different size charges could be applied. Now, it could be looked at, the Goliath, as one of those weapon systems that the Germans have developed. Sounds very fascinating. We've got a great interest in it today because obviously the way of robotics, remotely manned items, this idea we don't want to risk the human individual, um, so autonomous vehicles now coming along, it seems to pave the way. But actually this is part of actually a series and a program of different sorts of uh, remotely controlled vehicles that have been starting even way back in the First World War. 1939, the Russians are using tele-tanks, a series of different tanks, where they're actually being radio controlled remotely from another vehicle. Some of those were used in Finland in the Winter War. Um, in Britain even, we were getting a Matilda II tank and there was a project to build 60 of them as something called the Black Prince Project. And that was actually going to lead to a remotely controlled Matilda II tank going into action. So the idea behind um, this that we're very much more familiar with now, this idea of autonomous vehicles, actually in the past they were looking at that as well. 
So the Goliath's about 7,500 made, as I said. Um, it is, does see some action. It's used at Anzio in April of 1944 um, to some effect. It's used at Kursk. It's used famously in the Warsaw Uprising, where again, German soldiers are demolishing um, some of the Polish partisan positions by uh, driving these up and detonating them. But again, the Poles were looking at ways of being able to stop that because obviously all you need to do is interrupt that cabling. Um, and that's what happens on the D-Day landings where there's a number of Goliath have been set in little hides along the beaches. It looks like whether it was naval gunfire or other gunfire actually severed some of that cabling. So they didn't actually get used against the uh, invading Allied forces on D-Day. So, Again, a lot of fascination. Did it have much effect in the war? Not really, we don't think. But another one of those peculiar vehicles we've got here at the Tank Museum. Our particular one here, it's had a bit of an interesting chequered life. Uh, it was actually used to collect money. So we've uh, actually got a hole in the top. It was a donation tin for many of its years. But you can see as you look at it, dry sprockets are at the front. It will be driving in that direction. The rear container would have the cable reel um, and it's got a vent at the back for letting that cable spool out. Uh, the middle section would have the engine, whether it was the early model with the electric motors or the petrol engine. And it was actually put into position on a trolley um, with two men that would take it, two wheels on this trolley, leave it off. And the units that used it tend to be, there was a Panzer Pioneer Battalion, engineers as well used it as well. But as we can see, with only 7,500 made, not a huge amount of them actually saw service in the war. Um, but again, a fascinating idea uh, and one that obviously in this day and age is being developed more and more. If you do like the product we're putting out on YouTube, our tank chats, the various other things we're doing, if you can support us, we are an independent charity, that would really help. So subscribe to these broadcasts we make. And please, if you've got the opportunity, help supporting us by joining our patron scheme.